So last week I made a video about how players and coaches communicate on the court in late game situations. And I had comments saying that they would want a series on this. After looking through some games, I decided to pick the Warriors and Blazers to show why having a high basketball IQ is necessary to win a game. In the first quarter, the Blazers are about to inbound when you can hear Kent Bazemore say, Bazemore is talking about the potential screen Lillard may set for Canner or Mello, who he refers to as the bad swoon. And he's telling Curry to cover whoever is using Lillard's screen to get open under the basket. Now you can see that Lillard is not a screener, so Curry is worried about Lillard getting an open look off the canner screen, which gets him a layup at the hoop. One of the biggest stories from this game was Carmelo bullying the Warriors in the post because they elected to switch on pick and rolls. Here he gets a switch with Damian Lee on him, and this forces Brad Wanamaker to help, and you can see Melo pointing Covington to cut. This gets Pascal's attention, which leaves Simons in the corner, and he buries the three. So Terry Stotts calls a play called Steve Kerr raised the ball, which is used to help Melo go ISO in the post. He points at Hood to stay around the paint, so it makes it harder to double. And you can hear Terry Stotts say, "On the blaze, I'm which is the side away from the ball. In this case, it's where Covington and Trent are standing. If nothing is there, this usually means Carmelo can play a one-on-one -on -one and he drills the jumper over the smaller Wanamaker. Later, Melo gets another switch and Terry Stotts yells, Stotts is anticipating the fact that Hood might get an open three due to the attention on Carmelo, but the Warriors decide to play it straight up and Melo draws a foul. The other story about this game was how the Warriors defended Damian Lillard. With CJ out, the Warriors decide to trap Lillard on every pick and roll so that they can force it out of his hands. Because they are trapping him so much, Lillard can only get up 12 shots through 3 quarters, but he was still able to make an impact and I'll show you how. One of the most underrated parts of his game is his passing, especially when he's being double teamed. On this pick and roll with Canner, Wiseman and Bazemore blitz him to get it out of his hands. He first sees that Curry is rotating to Little, which means Melo is open. He throws a cross court right into Melo's shooting pockets for an open three. This is much harder than he makes it look and a skill he's going to need when he gets doubled like this. Here it happens again except with 5 seconds left on the shot clock, which is a very smart trap. Lillard needs to read the defense quickly and again sees Derek Jones in the corner. He throws a one handed cross court pass right into his shooting pockets for another three. His ability to set up his teammates is instrumental to why the Blazers are still playing well. Now I want to explain how Lillard is able to direct traffic on the court. So the initial play was for him to pass it to Covington, but Draymond cuts him off. Now there's two people on the top of the key, which is bad spacing. But you can see Lillard pointing Covington to go to the other side of the court. The most important part of this is that Draymond is at the top of the key, and the slower Looney is guarding Covington in the corner. As the Blazers run the play, Lillard cuts the hoop and you can see Looney moving towards Covington before realizing too late that he's about to score. If Draymond was in Looney's position, Lillard may or may not get that layup. In the third quarter, the Blazers wanted to run an off-ball screen for Gary Trent, but Lillard tells Canner to Standing defense by the Blazers also. Canner's confused, but as the play unfolds, you can see that Lillard pretends to screen for Trent, which gets Mulder one step behind him. And with Lillard's movement, Trent gets ahead of Mulder and a pretty good look at the hoop. But at the end of the day, the Blazers need Dame scoring. With the double teams, he tried going isolation more. He goes iso on Bazemore and drives into the lane before getting fouled. In the second half, he tried getting out in transition and take pull up threes in order to avoid the double teams. And this feels rushed, but there's still better looks than the ones he can get off in the half court. Now, I think this was one of the more successful possessions. So Dane gets a pick and roll, and he knows that Wiseman is going to trap him, so he uses a quick burst of speed to dribble around him, and he gets a good look from three, but it just doesn't go down. Now, in the fourth quarter, he does this again, and he's able to knock it down over Andrew Wiggins. Which leads us to the last 40 seconds of the game. Stotts yells, You have to rebound your partner. In order to make sure Curry doesn't get a chance to shoot. Even with that, he's eventually able to get up a floater that goes in and out. Now Lillard pushes the ball up the court and he gets to the left side. If you watched my previous video about Lou, Dort, and Lillard, you will know that he prefers going left, so he is right where he wants to be and I'm going to play out the rest. Lillard, step back three! Bang! Damian Lillard! 
but with 14 seconds left, the Warriors still have a chance. As the Blazers are ready to get set, you can see Lillard saying, A, be there, where he basically means be prepared for any screens coming, especially for Curry. As the play starts, Lillard tells Covington to pick up Curry, and eventually Rodney Hood picks him up after a curl. Draymond has a good fake, but I'm going to stop it here. It appears that Draymond has a clear lane to the hoop, but because Wiggins and Bazemore are congested in the paint, Lillard is able to take a chance at taking a charge, which is exactly what happens, and that's how the Blazers came away with the win. And so before I end this video, I want to say that getting to a thousand subs is a pretty big deal for me, and I want to thank y'all for encouraging me to keep going in the comments section. You guys are the reason why I even got here in the first place. If you want me to do a Q&A, please feel free to leave questions about anything from basketball to personal life or just anything hella random, and I'll do one if I get enough questions. But for now, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.